why do you say that you weren't what you thought was quote unquote good enough to make it at that time? I don't think I was disciplined enough. There's something that comes with discipline. When you, when you have the struggle and then you have the lack of knowledge, you're winging it. And in life, you can't get anywhere with winging it. There's some things you can get into or get access to that you're not supposed to by winging it. But if you want to succeed, I say look at whoever it is and dissect backwards and create a plan. Because the more that you have a plan, the more likely you are to succeed. So if your plan is, hey, um, I want to be an Uber driver, then you know like, okay, I have to download this app. I have to send in this information. I have to get qualified. I have to go to their courses and then I have to go uh, and then I get qualified to be an Uber driver and then I pick up people and drop them off. Okay, so there was a plan there. So if you want to make it as an actor, what's the plan? Oh, I'm just going to show up. Well, for the, the lottery person, that may work. But for the majority of us, you have to ask yourself, okay, outside of everybody wanting to be Brad Pitt, right? Let's just take that off the table for a second. Okay, what kind of career do you want to have? Do you want to have a career as a commercial actor? Do you want to have a career as uh, a theatrical actor, a movie, TV? Okay, well, who's the casting director for the, your favorite shows? What are they looking for? Um, what's the look? What's the tone? Right. If you're looking to go into movies where and I say all that because as an actor, you're really taking anything that comes to you. Right. If you're in that circuit, any audition, commercial, TV, film, you're just you just you're so hungry and so desperate for a job that you'll take anything union, non-union. It doesn't matter. But if you're able to create a plan. The tunnel, the light becomes so much clearer. So, for example. And this, this isn't the greatest example, but I had an agent in LA, right? I mean, not LA, Atlanta. Right now I'm agentless, no agent, no manager, no anything. I kind of bypassed all of that. But I had an agent in Atlanta and I knew that I wasn't a good client to have because I turned down 95% of the auditions that came in. Because I had the stability of a career, I didn't need the jobs. When you don't need the jobs, you become picky. So now by having a plan and a goal, I knew the roles that I wanted to play. I knew the projects that I wanted to be a part of were projects that sounded interesting to what I like and just interesting in general. I no longer needed to just apply and be accepted to anything out there because I didn't need the money from the job, albeit whether it's a commercial or an acting job because I had a career over here. There's power and strength in that because now there is no desperation. There is no, um, hey, let's just send Jason out to audition for this gas station guy. Like, how does that benefit me in my career? I, okay, I have one line. You can give that to anybody. You don't even have to audition for it. You can just give it to anybody. You can give it to a PA on set. Hey, can you say this line? Yeah, absolutely, right? So. When you have a plan and you're able to just kind of go from step one to two to three to four, the likelihood of you getting there sooner is a lot greater. How many times do you think you heard the word no while you were in Los Angeles? Every time. <laughs> I would say my, my booking rate was probably, I would, if I'm going to be fair, I would say probably about three to five percent. So out of every hundred, I booked maybe three to five, um, which in hindsight isn't bad. And I would say about 85% of it, 85% of the time I would get callbacks. And those are the most crushing because I'd rather just get a no than to get your hope up that you could get it. They called you back like Power Rangers. I went to like five auditions and you, you could possibly get it. And then they're like, nah, no. Uh, you know, I'd prefer to just, you know, cut me off at the door. But yeah, I would say no is probably the greatest thing to make you as a human being stronger. Because when you realize that every no is just 
closer yes they're just little things that come and come go out the way to get to that yes you welcome the no's I welcome no's it's okay because I'm going to talk to the next guy I'm going to talk to the next guy I'm going to talk to the next guy until I get the yes that's what's changed with being a filmmaker compared to wanting to be an actor if you're someone out there that's a creative you spend so much time wanting to get on set whether it's background work because that's how I started I started going background work um, a one-liner maybe a day player if you look back on it and you spend all those years just to get on set what happens if you would have created a plan to create your own set how would that have turned out and create the project and the role that you want to be a part of that you want to see and then be in a position to give other people opportunities in all of my films majority of the actors are first time second time actors with not a lot of credits and I make sure that if I say hey do you want to be a part of this project and they say yes and let's say in the script I only have one line for them I'll make sure to go back and write two three four five lines so they really feel like they were a part of the project and not just there to kind of make a cameo right so I just think that as a creative it's important to create the films that you want to see and you want to be a part of compared to wearing so much about trying to get on set I think it can change the, the dynamic for a lot of people because if you think about it social media has changed everything for people our age that were born in the 70s 80s like yeah we grew up with the Hollywood star for us it's the stars right for the newer generation it's the social media influencers they're the stars so you can create your star at home in Kentucky it doesn't matter where you are you can become a star you push record and you do something every day and just be consistent with it and I would challenge anybody I'm not good at this I don't do it but I would challenge anybody if you put on your calendar right now say I want to be an influencer right and for 365 days without missing a day you post something about something I can guarantee you that account that's at zero in a year if you did it every day without missing a day that you will be way further than you are today now the issue with that is comes back to responsibility to the human self how many people are going to stick to that every day and be disciplined because there's power in discipline to do that every single day not make excuses and not miss it because I don't do it every day I'm quite frankly I because I grew up in that era which I think is the best era for films 80s 90s like hands down the best era for films and entertainment um, that's what I enjoy doing so that's what I spend my time doing I'm not into social media as much as I should be because that's where everything is now um, yeah I would say if you want to make it you want to do it start with your phone start at home create it because then you get enough of a following they're going to come to you anyways in hindsight do you wish you had left Los Angeles earlier <sighs> yes and no uh, I want to say no because that led me to meeting my wife which uh, then we had our son but yes because it's not even leaving LA sooner it's creating sooner I I don't want to say wish because wish makes it seem like you're looking at some third entity to do something for you it would have been nice to create sooner create the roles that I wanted to see that I wanted to be a part of sooner that would have been nice and I think that would have changed a lot because for anybody out there once you do your first film whatever you thought was hard 
whatever you thought was difficult, whatever you thought was impossible is gone. Because when you can complete it once, you can complete it twice. Then each time you do it, it becomes easier and easier. So when I did the first film, by no means is it an Oscar film, is it, is it well written, because I'm not the best writer. I don't put commas and periods where they should be. I kind of just write and this is the story and this is what we're going to do. I don't do 10 drafts. I do maybe two just to kind of check it. Once you get that first film out, you learn where you make mistakes. You learn the focal length that you'd like to shoot at and that you don't like to shoot at. You kind of learn your style, right? So getting that first film out is more important for you as a human being and as a creator to let yourself know, like, I can do this and I can do it and get better every single day and I can keep creating than it is for you to create a masterpiece of a film. Because I'd rather have 10 average five-star films than to have one masterpiece. And the reason for that is because if you think of the economy of actors, writers, producers, grips, PAs, the whole economy of making one film, if I'm able to do 10 that are average films, I gave them a lifeline of 10. I gave actors and actresses the opportunity to be a part of 10 films compared to one. And you live and you grow and you, and and, and as time goes on, when you make films, it's now an experience because you've made them compared to watching them. When you watch a film or you watch a TV show, there's this ah, there's this magic to it that you're like, oh wow, that would be great. Then when you make it and you start making it and you start making film one, film two, TV series, web series, it's not that the magic leaves, the magic of the lens changes. Where now you're not looking for someone to give you an opportunity. You're able to give other people opportunities. And I can tell you from my films how many actors have started creating their own projects. And that in itself is so rewarding because by them looking at you and seeing you do it, they look at themselves and say, well, if he can do it with that, I can do it too. And that is so rewarding. And that I think is a game changer. What's your advice for, let's say an 18 year old, Mm -hmm. graduated high school, comes to LA with really no no plan, but also they're leaving a situation where they didn't have a choice, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. How do they keep themselves creative? How do they keep themselves safe? Okay, so that's, that's a really good question. I think that stay away from anything that looks easy. Uh, stay away from, hey, why don't you come live with me? Where is that coming from? What's the ulterior uh, alternative motor? Uh, What is the ulterior motive there? Um, I would say go back to school, even if it's worth, even if you have to take that loan, because you'll make that back. And I don't say go back to school for film, go back to school for something that you know makes money. Because having that, those funds, they're gonna help you create. They're gonna help you be a better version of yourself. So stay away from drugs, stay away from parties, stay away from situations where you are not your coherent self and write two goals. Write your goal on, okay, how do I get to where I wanna be? Whether that's a writer on the Fox lot, whether that's a producer or director, okay. Who can I shadow or who can I contact to mentor me? Because they'll give you insight and information that will get you there a lot sooner than you trying to figure it out. Um, How can I stay grounded and true to myself? You know, a lot of times you hear people talk about, oh, this person, you know, sold their soul or anything like that, right? Something crazy. But I think what really happens is when you're young and you don't have a choice and you're just trying to survive, I think you do things that 
as you get older and you grow as a person that you weren't proud of. And I think that as you get older, it sits on your conscience and it eats you. And I think that's more of the soldier soul than anything else. And I would say to stay strong to who you are at the core as a human being. Because when I was 18 and I was out here, there were opportunities where it's like, hey, yeah, come stay with me, right? And I never took up those opportunities. But it kept my conscience so clean and the objective of, and the goal of what I was trying to do so strong that even though I quit acting after 15 years, or it was like 12, 12 to 15 years, I don't remember exactly. But even though I quit at that audition, I didn't, it didn't take away the fire of wanting to be a part of something great. And the magic of film is that you're able to inspire someone at home, whether they're in India or they're in uh, Georgia, you're able to spread that magic to someone else. You're able to live forever within that space of time. So when you create a film and you star in it, you co-star in it, and you're on that screen, it's almost like a legacy capture piece because your kids, your grandkids will always be able to look at you in that time and space and say, look at my dad or my granddad, that was him. And I think that alone is, is such a magical thing uh, about film. And I know I kind of went off from the advice I would give the 18 year old, but I, that goes back to me saying, stay true to yourself. Don't compromise who you are. That doesn't mean that you, you, you don't have to bend and you have to give because in any even marriage or relationship and a career is kind of like a relationship. There's a give and a take, but you don't compromise in your core values as a human being in your pursuit of anything.